This incomplete and fully unassuming recording is on light and enlightenment. First, as seen through the lens of science and of our own sensory capacities, and then in a more hopeful and inspiring spiritual context of far-reaching quotations, poetry, scriptures, and lyrics. My overriding intention, as always, is inspiration, both yours and mine. I'll begin with a bit of scientific orientation and perspective. And while this first part may seem slightly heady, in its entirety, I assure you that it will also be full of heart. The study of light or optics falls under the science of physics. And as we have known for well beyond a century, light is a quantum of energy, of mystifying and discrete packets of electromagnetic radiation that have no mass and no weight. Visible light, or the light that we can typically see, is part of a broader electromagnetic field of energy that also includes other expressions of radiation, such as radio waves, microwaves, X-rays, gamma rays, and others. Before what we call the beginning, there was the absolute unconditioned fullness of nothing. Dark, imperceptible, inconceivable, potential creation, resting in timeless repose and completely empty of form. And then God, the supreme indivisible absolute, is said to have given the word, let there be light. And so it was and is that the universe, the infinite corpus or body of God, separated itself from itself and black body radiation, a term used in physics, came forth. From that expansion of radiation came vibration and then materialization and the five elements of nature with their endless and infinite permutations became manifest. Now for the purpose of at least one central theme of this presentation, it is important to note that this first essential light extending from what we call the Big Bang does not appear on the electromagnetic spectrum and that is because its pure, unsullied, and uncontaminated existence was perfectly still and actually preceded expression and the spectrum of energy that it eventually became. We have come to call it white light, and yet white light is not white simply because it appears white. It is white because it was an absolute unity, a resplendent harmony of one without a second prior to its expansion and dispersion into countless wavelengths and colors. And it is this unseen and overlooked harmonia that makes this white light pure in the highest and most essential definition of the term. When this light is separated through a prism or dispersed among water droplets in the sky, we can see its seven color composition in what we characteristically call a rainbow. And so, it is only by looking to the unity 
from which this rainbow of colors emerged, that we can see that which is the unchanging reality and unsullied truth of light. Light travels at a constant rate of 299,792,458 meters or 186,282 miles per second. However, as it moves through space time and encounters gravitational forces or passes through various media, such as air and dust, it can bend and slow down, albeit ever so slightly. This has magnificent metaphorical and metaphysical relevance, which will become increasingly apparent as we continue. Light is an enchanting, enthralling, and mind-boggling unit of waves and particles that behaves in accordance with its twofold or bi-personality. As it zips through space, it acts as an electromagnetic wave. And yet, whenever it strikes an object, it acts as an elementary particle. And depending on the nature of the object, that it meets, it can perform quite differently and expresses a variety of properties, such as refraction, reflection, dispersion, interference, polarization, and others. It is during this interactive or meet and greet process that light assumes the role of particles and gets referred to as photons. And when these photons of light resonate within a designated range along the electromagnetic spectrum, it can be detected <clears throat> by our human optical systems, which means that we can see it. And thus we call it visible light. As mentioned, light behaves differently when it encounters different objects. But this is also true of the light of the non-physical, non-material world, where since time immemorial, light has been viewed symbolically through religion, science, spirituality, poetry, song, and the mysterious optics of super mundane experience. Light is a fundamental facade of the cosmos, which itself is an expression of beauty, proportion, harmony, and flat out awe and wonder. Again, God is to have said, let there be light. And this, according to those who believe it, is how the beginningless beginning of creation came to be. There are 272 references to light in the Tanakh or Old Testament and in the New Testament of the Bible. In the Holy Quran, depending on the translation and interpretation, there is said to be 43 such references. Also in Islam, Anur, or the light, is mentioned as the 93rd name of the 99 names of Allah. And in a broader interpretation, Anur can also mean enlightenment or the awareness of God's truth. <clears throat> All indigenous cultures and faith traditions have their own distinct and yet somewhat similar references to and reference for God. 
In the Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, Zoroastrian, Sikh, Baha'i, and other faiths, light is used to describe God, wisdom, and spiritual enlightenment. Now let us proceed with an absorbing assortment of creative and timeless wisdom from scriptures, poetry, and the sayings and writings of a wide range of long acknowledged luminaries and others. I will also share some verses on light from my own poetic archives and may even sing a couple of songs. Some authors and sources will be called out during the presentation. All will be listed at the end. Now, according to Satya Sai Baba, the diversity of the five elements in creation has its origin in the divine pure light within. All this plurality has come from the initial unity. There is a single light of science, and to brighten it anywhere is to brighten it everywhere. David Bohm once said, the universe consists of frozen light. In the right light, at the right time, everything is extraordinary. Here is a verse by a 13th century philosopher and saint, Thomas Aquinas, entitled, What Does Light Talk About? When you recognize her beauty, the eye applauds, the heart stands in ovation, and the tongue, when she is near, is on its best behavior. It speaks more like light, what does light talk about? I asked a plant once. It said, I'm not sure, but it sure makes me grow. Einstein once said, the leaves and the light are one. We are all bathed in the same light, said Rumi. We are just light, and when light condenses, it becomes matter. Every step I take in light is mine forever. Let not that which you do harm or injure another. This flows from the recognition that the light, which is God, is the same in every form. And if you injure another, you are injuring that same light that is yourself. When the heart is pure, the light of wisdom shines. The illumined heart becomes the receptacle of pure love. In the Lord you are light, live as children of the light. If light is in your heart, you will find your way home. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This lyric is from another song by Bob Marley. Brothers and sisters in every little part, let our love shine a light in every corner of our heart. In the Christian Bible, Jesus Christ makes seven aham, or I am declarations. 
one of which is, I am the light of the world. He then added, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. As the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and heard a voice speaking. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light comes right around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Here is a verse by Nayira Wahid from her book entitled, Salt. I am your friend, a soul for your soul, a place for your life, home. Know this, sun or water, here or away, we are a lighthouse. We leave and we stay. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The wound is the place where the light enters you. It is during our darkest moments, said Aristotle, that we must focus to see the light. Satya Sai Baba, ask God to develop your sense of detachment. Ask him to put you on the road that leads to self-realization. Ask him to endow you with light and reason to know and experience that divine light. I never cease to be amazed at the countless and surprising ways the light gradually comes and takes over the darkness. Catholic saint, Francis of Assisi wrote, such love does the sky now pour that whenever I stand in a field, I have to wring out the light when I get home. There are two kinds of light, the glow that illuminates and the glare that obscures. Be the light that helps others see. And Ella Baker, give light and people will find the way. Lao Tzu, always use your light, but dim your brightness. Now too from the Holy Quran, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. 
the parable of his light is a niche wherein is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass, the glass as it were, a glittering star lit from a blessed olive tree, neither Eastern nor Western, whose oil almost lights up, though fire should not touch it. Light upon light, God guides to his light whomever he wishes. God draws parables for mankind, and God has knowledge of all things. God is the master of the faithful. He brings them out of darkness into light. Here is a celebrated declaration by Satya Sai Baba, briefly describing his mission on earth. I have come to light the lamp of love in your hearts, to see that it shines day by day with added luster. I have come to tell you of this universal, unitary faith, this spiritual principle, this path of love, this duty of love, this obligation to love. And now one from Isaiah and two from Jesus Christ. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. And from Matthew. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men all that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. The body, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Gandhi said, each one prays to God according to his own light. There is love within me, there is love within me, there is love within me, I am love. There is peace within me, there is peace within me, there is peace, I am peace. There is truth within me, there is truth within me, there is truth within me, I am true. There is light within me, there is light within me, there is light, I am light. Can he rectify false weight whose own scales are uncertain? Can you enlighten your neighbor while you yourself have no light? The one essential thing is that we strive to have light in ourselves. Our strivings will be recognized by others. And when people have light in themselves, it will shine out of them. Carl Jung, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. I have learned things in the dark, 
that I could never have learned in the light. Things that have saved my life over and over again. So that there is really only one logical conclusion. I need darkness as much as I need light. But my darling, there's no such thing as the light at the end of the tunnel. You must realize that you are the light. All the lights of the world cannot be compared to a ray of the inner light of oneself. God is truth and light is his shadow. What is to give light must endure burning. No degree of worldly darkness can extinguish the glow of a soul's inner light. Next are English translations of two of the most highly revered prayers from the Vedas, the Gayatri Mantra and the Asatoma prayer. These will be followed by a promise from the illustrious Buddhist scripture, the Dhammapada. The Gayatri, Om Supreme Divine, you are the creator of this universe, of earth, space, and heaven. We adore you, O Supreme Light, source of all creation. We meditate on thy divine radiance. Inspire all of our thoughts. Dispel our ignorance and illuminate our intelligence. The Asatoma Prayer. From untruth, lead us to truth. From darkness, lead us to light. From death, lead us to immortality. The Dhammapada. Free from desire, free from possessions, free from attachment and appetite, following the seven lights of awakening and rejoicing greatly in one's freedom. In this world, the wise person becomes oneself a light, pure, shining, and free. Sunlight is one and the same wherever it falls but only a bright surface like that of water or of a mirror reflects it fully. So is the divine light. It falls equally and impartially on all hearts, but it is the pure and pious hearts of the holy who receive and reflect that light well. Here are two rather ambitious verses from my own personal archives. With all her brilliance, effulgence, and resilience, Earth's humble sun is merely a barely perceptible vestige of the light that gave rise to her existence. That light, which is eternally sustaining ever dawning, ever bathing us in unity, ever beckoning us to look past those incidental daily dawns so we might see and become that first glow beyond her manifested truth. And here's the second one. The work of removing the self from the perennial obsession of desiring and becoming gradually reveals the boundless potential that is mine, the pure divine light that is me, the effulgent 
reality I am. These two threads that follow are from a Sanskrit text entitled Astavakra Samhita. When the universe manifests itself, verily then it is I that shine. Light is my very nature, and I am no other than light. Here's a light prayer by David Spangler. May we know the light that is eternally within us. May we be that light to the world. May we know the light within all the life around us. May we serve that light that all may thrive. May we know the light that yet seeks to unfold. May we be its unfolding that our tomorrows may be blessed. May light be present in who we are, where we are, and in all that we do. May we celebrate the presence of light. This next one is from a compilation of my earliest poetic efforts in the 1970s entitled Musings Along the Way. When I turned on that first light, it deeply inspired me to turn on those other lights I had not yet seen. And yet, it was only later that I learned that I, myself, was not the one who had turned on that first light in the first place. Here's one haiku. Dusk dawns mysteries to decode every night. Daybreak brings new light. Here's a poem I wrote as I was preparing this presentation. I always thought there was something amiss about refraction, polarization, and spectrums of light. Like the knowledge of good and evil, the acceptance of duality, any thought of not one. And yet, down here, and like love, spreading whatever light has been achieved within, is ever advised, always good, and strongly encouraged. From Thich Nhat Hanh, we have a lamp inside us. The oil of that lamp is our breathing, our steps, and our peaceful smile. And from Lord Buddha, be a light unto yourself. Over 2,000 years ago, Taoist master Chuang Tzu said, once you've gotten the meaning, you can forget the words. And then he asked, where can I find a man who has forgotten words so I can talk to him? And finally, another from Satya Sai Baba. Meditation on light is real meditation. Light is formless, eternal, divine. It is the safe way and the sure way. But above all is love. Love is the royal highway to God. I now leave you in peace, love, and light.